everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews. And tonight, just really quickly, I don't know how long we're going to even talk about this. Um, we're going to discuss briefly the new HBO Max original series, three episode premiere of Raised by Wolves, the show that's produced by Ridley Scott. And if you noticed, I didn't put a spoiler thing at the beginning of it because I'm not going to really spoil anything. I'm not going to tell you anything I don't think that isn't something you would find in the synopsis of the plot of the show other than a few basics that you'd want to know going into this. And mostly it's a recommendation uh, video whether or not you should watch this, give you some reasons and what I think of the overall premise and so far of what I've seen, that kind of deal. So, first off, this is so a Ridley Scott produced thing. This really looks like it takes place in the Prometheus world. Uh, it's just, it's very gray and just bleak. That's one thing about this, that it's bleak. Like, if, you're, if you've kind of had it with bleakness, I would not... This is not really that kind of... It's not a very hopeful show. Even though the people in the show have hopes. But it's very... It's just very gray. And, 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 and there doesn't seem to be a lot of hope in it. But it's really well produced, in my opinion. And the first episode is directed by Ridley Scott, which you can really tell. Uh, one thing I do like about it so far is the cast is relatively unknown so you don't have to go in with too many expectations of I hope so and so is like this or I hope so and so is like that the the most you really is that Travis Fimmel who was on that show Vikings I didn't watch it but I I know he's got those really crazy you know piercing eyes uh, I think it was in the World of Warcraft movie he's the most recognizable face here the other act, uh, actor is uh, Amanda Collin. There's a bunch of people in this, but Amanda Collin, who plays the android mother, is in this. Now, both of those actors are are actually really good. I, I shouldn't say it like that. Like, actually, they're really good in this. In fact, the acting is, for the most part, pretty good. The kids, on the other hand, <laughs> the acting is, they're kids. They're kids. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. The kids in this are just kind of run-of-the-mill kid actors. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't really care about any of the characters. <laughs> I, just, I just, I don't really care about any of the characters in this. Um, well, Amanda Collin plays mother, and there she's paired up with another android called father. Now, she's... You, at first, you think she's just a regular android, but she is actually what they call a necromancer. And she is powerful. She is more than a force to be reckoned with. While Father, on the other hand, is more of a basic android who's just kind of there to be her uh, second in command, you know, I guess second in command to help her raise these uh, embryos that they have on this ship. Okay, so let's get to that actual premise. So, world went to crap. Really, really went to crap. If you think things are bad now, it gets worse in this future. This is more than dystopian. This is like no-topian. <laughs> like, we have finally abandoned Earth. We have done so much damage in, in these wars that are going on between atheists and the religious people. Yeah. It, it always, I've, I've been pretty topical, I've been pretty vocal about some things lately. Um, look, if you guys know anything about my channel, I was raised in a cult. And so I'm not really a very religious person anymore. But I'm always going, you know, so much, so much in this world, in our world, comes down to belief systems and what happens here is basically what you kind of would expect something that could happen something that probably will happen it's happened before is two belief systems that just destroy each other 
they're just bent on destroying each other. And, and they in the world, you know, they don't go too far into why the world looks like it does, but it doesn't help that they basically just ruined what was left of the of the planet in the in this war between atheists and the religious group. And so there was a bunch of arcs made. Now the religious groups had, you know, they had the money and they were able to make a bunch of arcs, but apparently nobody thought that the atheists had any. They had little shuttles that were filled with just two androids and some embryonics, like the, the matter to make people. Yeah. And they were sent off and this one, it's the story of mother and father and the their struggle to create life on this planet that's inhabitable, but this planet looks like something is just as bad happened to it. They don't have cities or anything, but it's just real, like nothing's there. Everything seems to be extinct. You can't really get much to grow there, it's, but uh, it's a big planet. It does sound like there are other things to that, other possibilities on this planet, but where they land, it's pretty inhospitable, and like the synopsis says, they start off with like a bunch of babies and they and eventually some of them grow up to be kids and they all kind of die until there's only one left. The special one, the one that almost didn't live at the very beginning, the last one who's like they were just going to grind it up and feed it to the others. But this is the only one who lives, of course. And this character basically kind of, his arc it looks like is going to be, they, they already allude to him being the chosen one, the one prophesied. Prophesied? Prophesized? Whatever. <laughs> um, we also find out that the arc, one of the arcs of the religious group is there too. And they're ready to colonize and start colonizing. And with all the kids dead, they have to make the choice of whether or not they're going to let the, the one boy that lived go off with these people. Well, Mother has other plans. And the people come down there and basically it, it's already started to, like, started to clash. And her being a necromancer, things don't really go the human's way. Uh, right off the bat. Another interesting thing, though, is uh, Femel's character, who, who's Caleb. Without giving too much away, he's not what he seems, and he's the most interesting human character on the show, him and his wife, or female companion. And the, the, the other two, like the mother and father, they're also really interesting. Everybody else is just kind of stock person, fill in the blank here, head guy of, you know, in charge, bunch of just nameless red shirts. It's, it's just, there's not much there as far as character goes. And mother, there's not much character for, you know, her. She is just there to just completely do her job be the best mother she can be, father the same. And then you've got the humans who are trying to colonize and they want to get their children. And it's it's a really interesting idea, but again, without much character work, and they do try to give you some character work with the humans, they give you some backstory on that, which does is interesting. But the catch-up that you get is pretty quick, and so once you're all caught up, there's not really much growth other than, without spoiling anything, how much will the human, two humans change along the way in this group of religious people? And how much will mother and father change? And then you've got the kids. And, and the kid campion, like, a, he's just kind of, I, I don't really like him. <laughs> And uh, throughout it, there's just a lot of things that just, I don't know, he's a kid. Maybe that's the problem. But there's also evidence that after all this time, there's 
they're not alone on this planet. So you got the religious people and the atheists and whatever lives on this planet starts to poke its head out. And so it's this show is a really interesting idea. There's not much out there that's very good and very well produced in my opinion right now. We're all still waiting for like Tomorrow's the Boys. You know, I got Mandalorian coming out. Uh, and we got Lovecraft Country. Those are the shows that I'm really watching. Other than that, I'm not really paying attention to much else out there. But uh, will I review this week to week? We'll find out. It depends. I probably will if I can have time. But it's it's fine. I know that there's always going to be an audience for everything. So there's probably people out there right now who are just like devoted to find out every single aspect of this show. And they are going to live and die by it. But for right now, it's just... It's fine. It's interesting. It's got some interesting ideas. It's, like I said, pretty well acted, pretty well produced. And when she goes into necromancer mode, it's pretty effing nuts. <laughs> but we'll see. We're only three episodes in, and if I can only go, eh, it's all right, you know. It's not the worst thing. It's not the best thing. But we'll see as the sh uh, series progresses. So if I have to recommend it, like I said, it's pretty bleak. If you're not really into religious, uh, you know, fights, you know, uh, belief systems and things like that, um, you might not like this. You know, it, it does strongly go, you know, both sides have these strong objections to each other, which is pretty topical, you know, how things right now or a lot of things are coming down to belief systems. So... There's going to be people probably screaming from one and, oh, these people are it's so, you know, and then they will have the other people on the other side yelling at each other too. Like real life. So anyway, if you, you know, this is, like I said, I can't really, don't know if I, how much I recommend it. It all depends on your taste because it does have a lot of pretty controversial ideas, not controversial, divisive ideas as far as like which way you lean, depending on which way you lean. And here me, this guy in the middle who really don't give a shit about either side. I don't know. It's more like I'm watching a, you know, a really interesting futuristic reality show. That's how I put these kind of things. It's not like reality show. I just, when you don't have a dog in the hunt, you know, how, how much can I really go, oh yeah, I'm so for this side or that side when I really don't care one way or another what happens to anybody so <laughs> if you like this review slash recommendation slash i don't know what uh please hit the like button comment share subscribe hit the bell for all notifications otherwise this is rob saying we'll be back with more stuff later on